sense, it is nice to start this Katha on Sri Ramakrishna. Now you see, the word Katha kind of conjures up an image of trying to do you know, stories about Puranic tales, legendary ancient tales. The, word, the Katha you are going to hear is a contemporary Katha, a modern narrative. Now it is very important to recognize the, the, the use of narratives when you are talking about very subtle ideas like spirituality. You see, without the narrative, without the story format, however good the philosophy may be, it becomes dry and you feel that you are chewing on dry you know, straw, it becomes tiresome. A story allows you to kind of bring in lovely, marvelous ideas of spirituality in a story format. This is the uni unique feature about all the Kathas. In fact, if you look at the reason why we are attracted to say, watch entertainment on television, see the films, the reason is this. In a way, as we are human, the way we can relate to human ide to, to ideas about anything has to be in human terms. That is why we love to watch the soap operas. In a way, we are living the lives of those personalities, you see, through those stories. That's why we get hooked to, to all these kind of soap operas and television. Because we live in a way, all of us attach ourselves to certain characters in that particular story and live their lives. So you can see the power of narrative. It can be used or misused. You see, if you look at the soap operas, any soap opera, Eastern or Western, the soap operas will focus on kind of lower human aspiration. There is jealousy. You know, all this Hindi soap opera, ZTV is over. The clothes are out, you know, come on, you know, killed. There is jealousy, there's deviousness, there's deception. So you can promote very kind of poor kind of human aspirations or lower human aspirations through narratives and that still hooks you. In the same narrative, the power of narratives, you can again write the back of narratives to aspire to higher ideals. This is the power of Kathas. In fact, the reason why the Hindu population is fixated on the Kathas is purely for this reason. Because when you hear the stories of Ram or Krishna or all these various Kathas, Bhagavad Katha, Ramayana, Mahabharata, you, you immediately start linking up with some of those characters. And you, in a way, you leave your, you, you kind of ride on the back of those characters to develop those characteristics in our lives. We kind of borrow from them. That is why Kathas are such a powerful tool that the Hindus have recognized and used for thousands of years to promote high, high principles through stories, through the stories of Ramayana, through the stories of Mahabharata, through the stories, through the stories of say, the Bhagavad Puran. Marvelous ideas. But again, you see, this is the, 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 the power of the storytelling. But one thing that is putting off the youth of modern times, put them off the Kathas, is this. As the Kathas have been told over so many thousands of years, as they have been told, bits were added and bits were taken away. Bits were subtracted, bits, bits were added on. This is understandable because depending on the audience, the storyteller will always kind of adjust his story to suit the needs of the audience he's dealing with. And if this has been happening over thousands of years, the account you get today perhaps have no bearing to what actually happened. It may have lost complete touch with reality. And this is one of the drawbacks of Kathas, because Kathas sometimes have become so exaggerated that a modern youth will shy away from it, saying, look, I like these lovely personalities, but you know, some of these kind of ideas they're, they're conjuring up do not match up with reality. And a modern youth will, of course, that's why if you look at all the Kathas being shown on television, and look at the camera moving with the audience, there'll be hardly any youngster. Only a few children playing about, and the rest, elderly people like me, with the teeth falling out, hair falling out, just about, you know, kind of chewing cud. <laughs> Bit of religious entertainment. So this is kind of visible in the, this is why the Kathas, even though they are very potent, as I said, the power of narrative to carry the audience on higher ideals is a very important tool that we must use. And yet, because this thing has been done over thousands of years and you are stuck in a rut with just legendary stories, they have become counterproductive to the needs of the modern youth because they can't relate to it anymore. They say, look, if you want to just talk about you know, good over evil, we might as well watch Star Wars. Why should we watch Hanuman anymore? Because the same ideas are there, except they're done in modern format with all these you know, kind of gizmos, R2-D2 and all the rest of them. Might as well go for that. So why should we bother with, say, Hanuman and Ramayana? They are super stories, marvelous stories, but we can adopt modern ones rather than fall back on the antique ones. So the modern youth will shy away. 
And the other problem is this. The Kathakas do not give a health warning to their audience, especially the youth. They treat these Kathas with a lot of, you know, use your common sense when you are interpreting the Kathas. And decide for yourself to what extent this, are, this is reality and to what extent is pure narration, pure, pure storytelling. You must make the distinction. If you do not make the distinction, it will come, if you like, you come in conflict with rationality, common sense and science. It will really offend you. It will put you away, put you off religions altogether. So this idea of Katha is powerful, but just restrain yourself to things that happened thousands of years ago and you are not really sure to what extent this is historic or to what extent it's just made up, is becoming, if you like, has a limited validity in modern times. And this is very visible. So why should the Hindu religion, you know, allows this idea that you evolve with the times. As time moves on, the way you relate to spirituality must be presented in a modern format. It allows for evolution. So why don't we evolve? But you see, we have a problem. Like all animals who want to evolve, they are stuck. They don't like to evolve that easily. They have to be prodded. They have to be pushed. You know, they like to, st you know, we don't like to change. All of us are full of inertia. We don't like to lose. We are stuck with inertia. So, you see, we have to be pushed and hopefully make further progress. So, you see, the importance of Katha is a narrative to put across marvelous philosophic ideas, subtle ideas, abstract ideas in a story format which we can write on and try and incorporate them in our life is a very powerful tool. But do not limit yourself to just the kathas or the stories that came from very ancient past because we can't distinguish what is legendary, what is reality. And it puts off the youngsters. So it's necessary to produce a katha or a narrative which is suited to the modern times. And this is what we are trying to do today. We are going to look at a personality who is as dynamic as some of the personalities of the ancient Hindus and yet who lived in modern times, in our times. Let me tell you a little bit more before I start actually the story, the narration. You see, if you look at the night sky, you see the moon, you see the stars, you might see a comet pass by, and you say, what are the, how marvelous, you know, you wonder. In the same way, when you look at the religious landscape, you also discover various personalities. Just like the moon, which kind of is, is cooling, produces a cooling effect, you find giants, spiritual giants, who become, if you like, a solace of the, of the scorched hearts of humanity. They, if you like, continue to radiate tremendous kind of calmness and coolness that removes some of this kind of heat that we feel when we live our lives. We find such personalities. We also find those little sparkling things right in the background, the ancient sages, been twinkling the message of spirituality without making any fuss, without beating any drums which have influenced our society for thousands of years. The ancient rishis, the sages of India, they sparkle in the background. And we get this wondrous, some, some wondrous personality like a comet going over the, over, over the horizon who come with a grand idea and kind of lit, light up society for a short time. And we also find lots of fireflies, you know, fireflies. They kind of buzz about, shine, shimmer, and we wonder what is happening, what is moving them. In the same way, you find these wonderful bhaktas, the devotees, who also dance about, sing and dance in the name of God. They appear on the horizon for a short time, and then they quietly disappear. These are the bhaktas of the Hindu tradition. These are all marvelous personalities that color the landscape of religion of India. But then, once in a while, we suddenly see the sky, the horizon turning pink, and we see the rising sun. Something dramatic, not only just enhancing and protecting life, but actually giving life, like the sun. The spiritual message that comes through from these personalities lights up the whole of this hum humanity. It gives life. It is, the, if you like, the fountainhead of spirituality which the world seriously needs. Such personalities come from time to time and enliven, you know, kind of revive and refresh the powerful message of spirituality suited to their own times. We see them again and again. So today we are going to do a story of one such personality. And again, you know, what's the uniqueness of this personality? There is nothing extraordinary. I'm going to do a story in the most ordinary language 
of something that is extremely extraordinary and yet appears very ordinary. The unique feature of these modern personalities is telling us, don't you see the extraordinary is intertwined with what appears as ordinary. All of this appears ordinary. It is charged to the full with spirituality. Extraordinary, hidden or appearing as ordinary. So I'm going to be very careful to present a, a story which has got some kind of mystical element, but I'm going to keep them low. I'm going to keep it low. I don't want to fly off. I'm going to present this in a very kind of simple terms, in simple language, but a story that is extremely extraordinary. <laughs>